Hello again everyone, it's me, Matmus. We're talking about the Royal Navy and the new ship that is coming into service very soon. The Type 26 frigate. So many of you asked about this ship. And of course the Royal Navy doing what it does, protecting UK interests, which is basically the commonality of any navy in the world. Uh, a new ship is definitely a good thing to have when trying to complete this particular kind of mission. Now, the Type 26 uh, is a very interesting ship because it's a commonality program, which means it's been pushed across to multiple different countries and getting a lot of good feedback and a lot of good sales. Uh, a lot of countries, including Australia and Canada, have taken huge interest in procuring this beautiful frigate that is coming into service. Now, the Type 26 represents the future backbone, really, of the Royal Navy's um, leap forward in terms of flexibility of surface vessels that it enjoyed uh, a lot of, uh, you know, history to the older vessels that have been replaced for. And I, I really do feel like the 26 is, is bringing on a whole new level of, uh, you know, naval capabilities because the technology, the resources it can deploy uh, are very different to some of the older style platforms that are out there. And of course, I am not a naval uh, relevant, you know, YouTuber. I don't know much about the Navy. I, I should really learn more about it, especially the British Navy, because it is strewn in so much amazing history. But in terms of technological advancements and, you know, the equipment that they use, I just don't know enough about it. And it's nice to learn a little bit about it. So let's get into this. So the plan is to make up the next generation of the Royal Navy along with the UK's Type 31 frigates. A total of 8 of the Type 26 will be built on the Clyde as part of the Type 26 program and will start being delivered to the Royal Navy from the mid-2020s. The 6,900 ton Type 26 frigates will replace the anti-submarine warfare Type 23 frigates currently in service. All of the Type 26 will be based at the Devonport Naval Base, with the first three vessels being manufactured by BA Systems as part of a £3.7 billion contract. A deal for construction of the remaining five ships is still trying to be negotiated in 2020. The names of all eight of the Type 26s has been finalised and revealed. HMS Glasgow, HMS Cardiff, HMS Belfast, HMS Birmingham, HMS Sheffield, HMS Newcastle, HMS Edinburgh and HMS London. The Royal Navy's new Type 26 frigate though could be the most powerful and flexible warship of its time and for many decades to come. With the Type 26, the Royal Navy could get a very balanced warship with a wide array of sophisticated weaponry and flexibility to handle a multitude of different missions. Of course, one of the primary focuses of the ship is protecting the new beautiful HMS Queen Elizabeth and HMS Prince of Wales aircraft carriers, and she's going to do a very good job of it. Now, of course, you may think I'm a little British biased, being that I am from the UK, now I live in Canada, this ship is going to be used in both countries, but when you look at the statistics and the figures of this ship, they're pretty substantial into saying that it's pretty capable of what we want it to do. The new design is 149 meters long and has a top speed of more than 26 knots, no pun intended, and the accommodation for up to 200 sailors. It is expected to have 60 days worth of endurance and have a range of around 7,000 miles at 15 knot speed. The frigate's weapons loadout, in theory, is very impressive. In addition to the standard 5-inch gun, it includes 48 vertical launch cells for the Sea Scepter surface-to-air missiles with a 15-mile range. Impressively, there are also an additional 24 Mark 41 vertical launch cells for larger missile types, including the beautiful Tomahawk land attack cruise missile and various types of anti-ship missiles that are in large size. The next generation of anti-ship missile is a huge deal, however, as this would ensure that these vessels will be one of the most versatile British warships in decades. One of their roles will be obviously to provide the advanced protection for the United Kingdom's nuclear deterrent, offering an anti-submarine warfare capability, which is of course the huge, huge killer potential for aircraft carriers. The City class will replace 8 of the 13 Type 23 frigates of the Royal Navy and export orders already being sought after by BAE and multiple other countries being procured by them. The program has been underway since 1998, initially under the name of Future Service Combatant. The original working model for the ship put the length at 141 meters and gave displacement close to 7,000 tons. In late 2010, it was reported that the specifications had been reduced in order to bring the cost down from 500 million pounds to 250 to 350 million pounds per ship. By 2011, new specifications details began to emerge of a 5,400 ton ship, emphasizing flexibility and modularity. 
The propulsion system of the Royal Navy ships will have a gas turbine and four high-speed diesel generators driving two electric motors in a COD-LOG arrangement. COD-LOG simply stands for Combined Diesel, Electric or Gas. In 2012, Rolls-Royce designed the well-known MT-30 using the Queen Elizabeth carriers to enable its use in a smaller ship, such as the Type 26. It is now known that the vessels will be using the MT-30. BAE believed that some potential customers would actually prefer to lose a few knots of speed by opting to use cheaper engines, however no foreign customers have fully committed to that yet. It's no secret that the Type 26 is designed with modularity and flexibility in mind to enhance the versatility across a wide range of operations, ranging from counter piracy and disaster relief operations to high intensity warfighting. The latest design of this ship has a large amidship mission bay instead of the stern well deck featured in previous designs. The relocation of the bay amidships from the stern could possibly mean a decrease in the volume of space available to the equipment carried, but the new design would seem to have space enough for a few large boats or other large scale systems and materials inside of there. Interesting bit of information for you though is that the plan for the Type 26 to be able to deploy SDVs or swimmer delivery vehicles for deployment of special forces, this would make sense. That's that's something they're really trying to focus on is being able to push out Royal Marines, SAS, SBS, whoever it may be, specifically SBS in this particular instance, um, because they've upped the accommodation facilities on the ship to 200 people. And remember that the accommodation isn't just for sailors, it's for service personnel on board the ship that also need to live and sleep and work etc to be deployed from the ship and i think a lot of the time we think of you know just the capacity of sailors being able to operate the ship itself but you still need to feed and clothe and you know rest up the troops that are being deployed from this ship uh to defend the fleet or to take part in operations so it's kind of interesting that that's something that they've they've released to say you know what yeah we do have a little bit of a extra capacity to put some extra troops in there if we need to but it's not at all clear that London, in terms of weaponry, want to fully fund the new weapons for the Type 26. No firm commitment really has been made of any of the weapon types being able to be fired from the Mark 41, but the first vessel, not entering the sea tiles for quite a few years, will allow them to kind of play around for a little bit and see what they do want to pick. So the time really hasn't come yet to order anything specifically. However, the Type 26 exemplifies the current meaning of frigate. It is a general purpose surface combatant with a point or limited area defense system. Just how limited depends on its radar and the targets it's facing. ESSM probably can match the performance of an older area defense system against relatively slow targets. Supersonic attack is more challenging though because effective range shrinks. ESSM has reported a speed of Mach 4 plus or 2600 knots at sea level and a range of at least 27 nautical miles. An inbound missile traveling at Mach 2 or 1,300 knots would be in range of ESSM for less than a minute before striking the ship. A ship linked to a fleet's cooperative engagement system would improve ESM's ability to actually be effective of the over-horizon weapon, but reaction times would still remain relatively short. The design should possess considerable ASW capabilities, thanks to the large bow housing for sonar and towed arrays plus a hangar and a flight deck capacity for a helicopter as large as the Augusta Westland Merlin. The British version of the Type 26 employs the underwater type system 2087, which is an active and passive towed sonar array, which incorporates a low frequency pinger to extend detection range against quiet submarines. Many navies currently operate similar, smaller, specialized ASW frigates with limited or non-existent organic air defense. The Type 26 program basically raises the question of whether to lose those smaller ships and if they are actually viable. Many countries and a few subnational groups possess capable anti-ship missiles and littoral operations usually bring ships within range. In effect, the difference in size and the cost of the Type 26 compared to the more narrowly associated ASW frigates may be the minimum price of admission to any littoral area, and not only the littorals. Submarines increasingly are armed with anti-ship missiles that can be launched while submerged. Iran and other small navies claim to have such a capability. As an escort, a frigate will often have to protect other ships from submarine and air attack threats. Very short-range point defense weapons such as the Raytheon Sea Ram and the Phalanx close-in weapon system may protect the frigate, but they will be pretty much a little use to anyone else in the convoy or the fleet. Overall though, the Type 26 and the ships like it represent the high end of a future high-low mix. 
Candidates for the low end include the proposed British Type 31 frigate, yet to be chosen from among three competitors, and the French frigate de defense de intervention, or FDI, with its tumble home, wave piercing bow. But the low end ships have minimal air defense, and their survivability in a high end fight appears poor without upgraded anti air systems. That raises the question of whether navies will wind up paying for upgrades that raise the cost of low end ships to near that of high end ones, because so much of the cost in these systems are rather than in the hulls than anything else. So it looks as though the Type 26 has a lot of capabilities, whether it be taking out submarines, taking out aircraft, or just being able to do a lot of different things. Of course, the cost of these ships is substantial. You know, the Australian Navy has uh, proposed a huge shipbuilding yard that is doing a lot of work there. Uh, very interesting to watch this cutscene of exactly, you know, the way in which they're putting the ship together. And BA Systems have really invested a lot of time and infrastructure into these ships because it's a huge contract. I must admit, I do really enjoy the fact that the Royal Navy is getting some fancy new ships coming into play, uh, some really cool technology. And that, you know, mission service. Service Bay, uh, very, very nice uh, integration there to be able to deploy troops if needs be, wherever it be around the world, you know, to fulfill the missions that are required from the ship. So I'd love to hear your opinion on the Type 26 and what you think of it. Please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Thank you to everyone who has been supporting me recently on my channel, whether it be hitting the bell by the subscribe button, following me on Facebook, coming to chat with me on Discord, or contributing towards my Patreon or my crowdfund for my CVRT. I cannot express how much I appreciate each and every one of you, even if you're just coming by to watch. It really does mean a lot to me, and, you know, I am really enjoy making content for you guys. If there's anything in particular you do want me to do a video review on, please leave them in the comment section below. I have a very, very long list that I'm working on in back and forth. I know a lot of you have been wondering, hey, Matt, why aren't you doing as many military reviews? You know what? Sometimes it's just nice to have some fun with the channel. You know, I know a lot of you... Don't watch all of my content, that's okay. But the stuff you do watch, you know, with the military stuff, I hope you're enjoying it. Um, anyway, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and uh, I will catch you on the next one. All the best. Bye-bye.